Dana, welcome to Made Every Day. Today we're gonna make some pillows with piping around the side. So let's get started. I've shown you how to make piping before, and when you sew it to a pillow, it gives you this really fun three-dimensional pop of color. What we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna make the piping while we sew it to the pillow, all in one step. Now we're building on two previous projects that we've already done. One is the envelope slipcover pillow, and the other is the how to make piping video. So here's what you need. Fabric, cording, and bias cut strips of fabric already sewn together. If you remember from our how to make piping video, we cut strips of fabric on the bias or the 45 degree angle, then we took our cording, placed it right on our fabric, folded the fabric over, and then we sewed right next to the cording. Now we're gonna do that as we sew it to our pillow. And for my cording, I've cut my strips two inches wide because this cording is about a half inch diameter. I've already sewn them together here so that I have one long continuous strip of fabric. Now for my pillow, I've cut the front of my pillow 16 by 16 inches because my pillow form that's gonna go inside is 16 by 16 inches. For the back, I have two panels that are 16 by 10 inches and those will overlap each other to give us that little secret opening in the back. Okay, let's start sewing. Now I'm only sewing with the front of my pillow right now. I've also got my strips of fabric and I've got my cording. And we wanna change our presser foot to the zipper presser foot. In the piping video, I showed you how to use the piping foot and the zipper foot, but this cording is a little too big for my piping foot. So the zipper one is going to work just fine. And then I'm gonna position my needle a little over to the left for my baby lock machine. Okay, now I'm also changing my thread color to orange so that it coordinates with my fabric here because sometimes you actually can see little bits of thread. So I've already put some in the bobbin, and I know I've said this before, but what I love about this baby lock is the automatic needle threader. I just push this button, and it goes right through. Now grab your strip of fabric, place your cording inside, fold it over, and start in the middle of one of the sides, and you wanna leave about a two inch tail there. I'm actually gonna pin that in place just so I can keep it where I need it to be as I start sewing. Okay, let's take it over to our machine. Stick it under, and remember that you need to leave this tail here. That way we'll be able to finish off the ends. Double check our needle position so that it's close to that cording. Okay, looks good, we can sew. Do a little back stitch. As you're sewing, you wanna make sure that this raw edge of the bias strip is flush with the raw edge of the pillow. And then just keep sewing down. As you approach the corner, stop about an inch or two, and we're gonna cut into the bias strip just a little bit. Make a few snips, and what this will do is it will give some ease to our corner so we can easily go around. Go down, and then leave your needle down, pick up the presser foot, pivot, and turn your bias tape and cording. And you can see that those little cuts are making it easier for this to go around that curve. Okay, put your presser foot back down. Make sure that none of these little clippings that we just did are pushed underneath. You want them to be out. And continue sewing. All the way down to the next corner. We'll clip again when we get to the next corner. As you sew, just make sure that your cording is in the middle that the sides are folded properly and that it's flush there. And if you feel like you're just going too fast with your foot pedal, you can always adjust your speed control here. Place it in the middle so that you can only go so fast. Because you wanna be a little precise here so that it looks really nice and tight around your pillow when you're done. I'm approaching our next corner here. I'm gonna cut a few little clips here. And I'm just spacing them about a quarter of an inch. This is nothing exact. Just something to give you a little flare on that corner. Go down. And stop. Lift. Pivot. Sometimes it helps if you do a couple of stitches just on the kind of a 45 degree angle right there in the exact corner. And then pivot even more. 
Just keep going all the way around your pillow until we get to the beginning again. Okay, I'm approaching the end here, meaning I'm back to the beginning where I started. I'm gonna stop about a couple inches shy here. Then I'm gonna overlap these a little bit. Oh, a couple inches and cut it. Now we've got these two ends here and we wanna finish them off nicely so that it looks seamless on our pillow. So let's take it away from our machine for a moment. Now if you had sewn this with piping that you'd purchased from the store and it was already sewn together, what you'd wanna do is take a seam ripper and take apart some of these stitches at the beginning and end so that you can actually see the loose cording inside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the cording so that these two pieces butt up right next to each other so that it is just seamless. So I'm gonna cut this one. And then I'm gonna cut the other one. And looks like I need to cut it a little bit more. Now you can see that my cording is kind of unraveling on me. Once we sew the piping strips around, it will stand there nicely. Okay, what we wanna do is fold one of the edges lay the other one inside and fold it right on top. Okay, just like that. You can see that I've made a really nice edge right there. I'm gonna actually pin that in place so that everything stays together. Okay, there we go. When you're done with your pillow, no one's ever gonna notice that. Let's go back to our machine and sew that last little part closed. Do a little back stitch at the beginning. Sew down. Now because this is so tight, that little fold is not gonna come undone. You could sew those ends together, but I feel like folding is just a little bit easier. Do a back stitch, cut your threads, and the top of our pillow is done. Let's sew the back panels to the pillow front. We have the front of our pillow done. Now we wanna take our back panels, lay them on top, overlap them, and pin them in place. So start with the first panel, and then match it up so the edges are all flush with each other, and pin it in place. You definitely wanna use pins here, because things can have a tendency to shift a little bit, because this piping is three-dimensional inside, it's kind of popping up. Now it's important when you get to the corners that none of these little pieces that we cut are poking into the piping. You wanna make sure those are pushed down when you place your pin in that corner. All right, we're almost done here. Once we sew this in place, we had to put our pillow inside. Now grab your other side, and you can see these back panels that I have already folded over the edge and sewn them so they look nice and polished on the front. Make sure the direction of your print is going the same on all the panels. You don't want part of it to end up upside down. Match it up at the edge first. Okay, and then you can see on the top here that it's just overlapping a couple inches and that's gonna create that little pocket that we can get our pillow in. Okay, just finished pinning a little bit and then we'll be ready to sew. I've been wanting to make new pillows for my front porch for a while now, so this is a good excuse to try out some piping. Okay, we're ready to sew it all together. Now we're gonna sew this together the same way that we sewed the piping to the pillow front with our zipper foot. Now you can't see the piping anymore because it's hidden between the layers, but we can definitely feel where it is. And the zipper foot is gonna butt up real close to that and give you a nice close stitch. Start with a little back stitch and then just sew down. And you can see how close I'm able to get right to that piping. When we get to the corners, Go slowly. And you may not even need to lift your presser foot. You might be able to just go right around like that. Okay. Now just keep going all the way around. Okay, I've made it back to the beginning. I just wanna do a little back stitch. Trim my threads. And the last thing we need to do before we can put our pillow in is to clip these corners. So just cut them. This will reduce the bulk in those corners and make them stick out a little nicer. Okay, let's flip this thing around and see what it looks like. This is always the really fun moment. <sighs> make sure that all your work was nice and that your corners look good. It's looking pretty good so far. All right, 
That looks pretty fantastic. Let's put our pillow inside. Okay, and look at that. We just made a pillow with piping around the edges. Just one more reason to use that cute little trim. I'm gonna go decorate my front porch. I can't wait to see what you do with yours. For more ideas and tutorials, visit my website, madeeveryday.com, and for more information on sewing machines, go to babylock.com, where it's all for the love of sewing. I'll see you next time.